So I'm getting ready to build my burner here, and I'm just going to talk quickly about the fundamentals of how the burner works, and then I'll go start grinding some metal and work on it. But basically what you have is two air inlets. Um, you can find all these parts on my previous video just to see exactly what I used. Um, but you've got two air inlets. Uh, you need a gas supply that's basically centered, perfectly centered in this pipe and has a small nozzle. And what that does is rushes the gas in super fast uh, and through a tiny little hole and then sucks air in to mix with the gas because you really need a good air to fuel ratio uh, to get a good clean blue burn. And what's important in the design of this, if you're using this design or another design, is that you have adjustability. So you want to be able to do things like move your tube in or out to tune the thing. Um, you want to be able to change the hole size or uh, choke off uh, the inlet holes and just achieve the perfect air to fuel ratio because too much fuel for too little air won't burn well or too uh, much air for too little fuel uh, also won't burn well. So you just want to kind of be able to dial it either way. Um, something that also helps to dial that is having an adjustable regulator so I can adjust the pressure of this until that uh, gas flow is just right. Uh, on the end of this, I have a larger piece of pipe that will act like a flare um, to kind of allow that flame to expand as it goes into the forge. And what I might consider doing is actually heating this up and flaring it out even more, but we'll see how it goes if that's something I do or not after I've uh, had some time to tune this. And uh, another thing, it's nice to have a shutoff valve, so just in case something starts to get out of control. It's nice to have a quick um, shut off on the end of your thing. And anything that's brass or anything that's soldered, keep it just a little bit far away from the end of this because when you shut your, your um, forge off, it could suck quite a bit of hot air out of here. So those solder joints could uh, end up melting on you and failing. So pretty basic and first thing I'm really going to need to do is grind down on the outside of this tube uh, so that this flare will slide over it well and, and I'll probably put a set screw on this so that I can lock it down. And what I'm going to use to grind on this is a, a 40 grit flap disc on an angle grinder. I'm just trying to file any burrs off the corner here. Just so there's nothing to really create any turbulence as that gas and air are flowing out of the end of the three quarter inch tube. And if I can create a little bit of a radius on here, it's even better. Just tapping a hole in the side of my my um, nozzle here, and what that'll do is allow me to put a set screw in there to to lock this thing on at whatever depth I want to set the tube in it at. Now I'm just attaching the cross T to the three quarter inch tube. So your next step is going to be to drill a five sixteenths hole into your three quarter inch plug here. And I've made a dimple with a punch just to make sure that my drill doesn't walk on me. And I'm going to drill a pilot hole and then I'll move up to the five sixteenths. So ideally you do this on a drill press. Um, you can use a hand drill if you're really, really good at drilling straight. Uh, I'm just going to use my 
homemade CNC mill here because it basically works just like a uh, drill press. I drilled and tapped a hole in the side of my three quarter inch plug which that'll allow us to lock our little tube in place and slide it in and out as we need to. So I've drilled the brass out and I'm tapping this for a quarter twenty and this will fit our MIG tip. And I'll drill the end of my fitting out to five sixteenths. So I've added a pretty liberal amount of flux to my male to female adapter and my five sixteenths tube and I'm just going to solder this just as if it was copper. So we're going to heat the heck out of it. I'm using MAP gas, but you can do it with propane. It's just kind of right on the edge. I am going to go ahead and put choke plates on this, which are basically just um, little one inch or one inch and a quarter washers uh, that I'll use a 632nd screw to pivot on the opening of my cross T here. So I'll first just drill uh, holes in my washers. And all that's really left now is to assemble everything here. So I'll assemble the valve on. Slide it into my connector on top here. I've actually added a second screw on the side just to have more side to side adjustment. And just check really hard, make sure there's no leaks when you turn this thing on. Spray it with some soapy water and if it bubbles, if you've got a leak and you definitely just don't want that. And now we've got our whole thing assembled. The chokes are on. I've put little springs on here to kind of hold the choke um, from vibrating back and forth. And the other thing just to make sure is just make sure that your, your MIG tip is perfectly centered in the middle here. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this is a 035 MIG tip, 35 thousandths. And we're going to go ahead and try it. If we have to, we can drill it out a little bit bigger. But ideally, if you can use a smaller uh, hole, it's a little bit better because you'll conserve on fuel. So we're going to go ahead and give this thing a tune, start it up, see how it goes. Uh, so stay tuned for a video on that.